Coming up on this edition of Access Virginia Beach, waterlogged, rain and wind swamped the resort city during an October storm. Plus, education needs. Governor McAuliffe makes a stop at Kellum High School to talk about increased investment in education. And stranded, a new exhibit opens at the Virginia Aquarium and Marine Science Center. That and more coming up as we access Virginia Beach. Hello and welcome to VBTV's Access Virginia Beach, a program that informs you of news and events from around our cities and schools. I'm your host, Stephanie Sutton. Thanks for joining us. Initial forecast predicted a major impact from Hurricane Joaquin. Luckily, the worst case scenario didn't happen and Joaquin veered out to sea, but the Hampton Roads area still saw lots of rain and flooding. Although the resort city was spared the brunt of hurricane force winds and storm surge, the area saw high amounts of rain, moderate winds, and major high tides. The north end of Virginia Beach experienced lots of street flooding, especially in the Lynn Haven Colony, Broad Bay Island, and Princess Anne Hills neighborhoods. Some area businesses were also underwater. Waterfront property in Sandbridge and Croatan experienced a significant amount of erosion as sand got washed out to sea during the stormy weather. Cars also struggled to get through flooded roadways in the Sandbridge area. The oceanfront didn't fare much better. Winds that clocked in at 40 miles per hour whipped the area, accompanied by pelting rain, rough surf, and huge waves. After all that wind and rain, it was cleanup time across Virginia Beach. Let's take a look at what washed ashore and see how crews are keeping the beach and boardwalk clean. We did actually very well compared to other cities. We've got a lot of blowing sand and uh, Surf still a little rough. We have a lot of seaweed straw on the beaches and uh, in some cases timber, trees, tree stumps uh, that have washed up on our shorelines. Uh, we've got a, a, a buoy in uh, the north end of Sandbridge and a buoy down here at 5th Street that have come up on shore. We have been working with the uh, uh, Coast Guard and we're told it'll be about the 19th of this month before they're able to get their cutter up here close enough to, to pull them back out and reset them. The first drills are to try to take care of all the safety items that we have and that would be the timber and the trees. Some of those things may have spikes or nails and this, that have washed up and we don't want anybody uh, getting hurt on those things. So we, we address those kind of items first and, and foremost. And then we're going to go to the cleanup in which we're in that mode today trying to take care of the blowing sand on the boardwalk and bike trails and around the other areas we have uh, structures. We're trying to stay just ahead of the events and help everybody to come down and have a good time. Remember, disasters can happen at any time. Hurricane season runs through November 30th. Are you prepared? More than 850,000 students are transported to school each day across the Commonwealth of Virginia. Governor McAuliffe plans to make education a priority in his upcoming budget proposal, where he wants to hear from the stakeholders first. The governor has been outspoken in saying that he understands the challenges facing Virginia's public schools, our teachers, and our students. And I want you all to know that that is encouraging for those of us in the field to hear. The governor got to hear firsthand about those challenges when he sat down with education leaders from across Hampton Roads at a roundtable discussion. Are we teaching our children skills to match the jobs that we are going to have? And it all comes down to the education system. So we're here to hear good advice from you. We're here to listen to you. Uh, we've gotten so many great comments, a lot of consistent themes, and some creative new ideas. Kellum High School hosted the event. The visit was part of the governor's statewide education listening tour. He has met with teachers across Virginia to talk about education priorities. I'm all in on STEM. STEM is the greatest investment I think we can make right now. Um, but we just don't have time for them to be creative because we have so many objectives to teach. Topics discussed included reinvesting in education, reducing the pressure of testing, and innovating the traditional high school experience. McAuliffe has held eight roundtable events across Virginia and is expected to release his budget proposal in December. The event was captured in its entirety. Log on to vbgov.com slash vbtv for a listing of air dates. Tourism is a major economic driver both nationally and especially here in the resort city. The Convention and Visitors Bureau recently hosted the State of Virginia's Beach Tourism Luncheon at the Convention Center. The industry in Virginia Beach is really thriving. We've had four straight record years and 15 will be another record year for us. 
Record numbers of visitor spending have set the bar high in Virginia Beach regarding the year-round tourist season. The goal is to get your fair share of all those international travelers. Roger Dow, CEO of the National Travel Association, was the keynote speaker at the luncheon. He believes international travel will soon become the big-time breadwinner of the tourism industry. My message today is really going to be an overview of the travel industry, which is really in tremendous shape. It's growing internationally and domestically. And they're going to bring it down to the kinds of things that Virginia Beach has to do. Uh, there's a lot of positive things going on here, but you're fighting infrastructure and some other things that are really important to getting more tourists here. His message addressed critical travel-related policy issues and discussed the important work currently being done nationally and locally to support tourism. But the tourism climate around the country is outstanding. We've had year after year growth. Uh, it's now a $2.1 trillion industry. It's the biggest service export, and it's one of the biggest employers. Uh, one out of nine Americans gets their job from tourism. The power of travel has been a blessing to Virginia Beach. The last four summers have shown a steady growth in regards to tourism spending and overnight stays at local hotels. I think it's because we're diversifying out of our markets to become more of a year-round destination. You know, and just not a summer season resort, and we're making great progress there with our international visitation, our convention business, our sports marketing business, and now our international business. Virginia Beach prides itself on being a national tourism destination. Overseas marketing has picked up, and leaders hope the beach will soon become a major international travel destination. Data released by the United States Travel Association reveals that direct travel-related expenditures for Virginia Beach in 2013 reached $1.3 billion, a 2% increase over 2012. To learn more about the economic impact of tourism, log on to visitvirginiabeach.com. Everyone loves a good scare on Halloween, but not when it comes to safety. Here are some tips to keep your Halloween safe. Trick or treat starts at dusk and goes until 8 p.m. and only children 12 and under can participate. An adult should escort small children and older kids should go in large groups. Look both ways before crossing the street and also remember to carry a flashlight and check your candy before eating it. And if you don't want visitors, keep your porch light off during trick or treating hours. This year Halloween falls on a Saturday and not to ruin anyone's fun, but be aware that if you're over 12 years old and you're out trick or treating, you're committing a class four misdemeanor. The Virginia Aquarium Straining Response Program responds to stranded marine mammals and sea turtles along the Virginia coast and beyond. Typically, the public doesn't get a chance to see the team in action, but thanks to a new exhibit, they can now share in their adventures. It's wonderful to have everyone here this afternoon. Straining Center volunteers, staff, trustees, and VIPs from the city help celebrate the unveiling of a new exhibit. One, two, three. There we go. Stranded, the newest exhibit at the Virginia Aquarium and Marine Science Center, gives visitors a chance to learn about the aspects of the straining team's work and the animals they encounter. For the very first time, people will be able to see what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. We're on call 365 days a year, uh, 24 hours a day for animals that strand. And so when we do respond to a stranding, we have to go out into, into, and find the animals. We then bring them in if they're alive, and we, we, we investigate them, we feed them, we, our veterinarians take care of them. And you can explore all of this and more in the exhibit, from information on recent patients to a giant touchscreen and even a glimpse into a dolphin necropsy. This interactive exhibit has something for everybody. Three major donors helped support the project and were recognized at the ceremony. The uh, Hanson Family Foundation, a uh, local uh, foundation that, that gave us a tremendous amount of support. We also had the Floyd E. Kellum Jr. Family Fund, uh, longtime supporters of the aquarium, and they also helped with this project. And lastly, our aquarium connection. The straining response team responds to about 300 strainings a year and are supported entirely by donations. The aquarium is located at 717 General Booth Boulevard. More information can be found at virginiaaquarium.com. Coming up next on this edition of Access Virginia Beach, the luck of the Irish, a delegation of students from Virginia Beach's sister city, North Down, Ireland, is in town. We'll have that and more when we return. Virginia Beach Schools Parent Connection is your one-stop for information and events which support families and promote student success. Parents, did you know that being mindful of your own behaviors can support positive growth in your children? 
Plan to join CHKD for a four-part series, Mindful Parent, Connected Child, meeting Monday evenings, 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. at the CHKD Health and Surgery Center at Princess Anne in Virginia Beach. These free workshops will focus on awareness, regulation, and deliberate action as tools to enhance relationships and build positive connections with your children. Weekly classes begin Monday, October 19th. Register by calling 668-9304 or online at the address on your screen. The internet is a household resource for all of us. From checking the news to connecting through social media, most people are online every day. Join Parent Connection for a free workshop, Technology Resources for Parents and Social Media and Internet Safety. The workshop is being held in the Lansdowne High School Auditorium, Thursday, November 5th, 6.30 to 8 p.m. Parents will learn how to log into Parent Portal to access student grades, discuss technology resources, and gain a better understanding of the division's Bring Your Own Device. To register, call 263-1936. To learn more about these activities or to see a complete calendar of events, visit the Parent Connection page of vbschools.com. Welcome back to Access Virginia Beach. I'm Stephanie Sutton. The City of Virginia Beach recently held its 2015 Small Women-Owned and Minority-Owned Business Forum at Tidewater Community College. We've been very fortunate to be able to host this and make uh, an environment uh, that is conducive for SWAM companies to better understand how to engage with larger companies. The third annual forum focused on supplier diversity procurement opportunities. It was co-hosted by council member Dr. Amelia Ross Hammond and the Virginia Beach Department of Economic Development. This is very important and has a great significance for our small women and minority owned businesses as well as veteran service disabled uh, businesses. 180 members of the SWAM business community showed up for the event. The forum provides the local small business community an opportunity to learn how several of the largest energy companies in the Mid-Atlantic region have structured their diversity programs. We believe that um, really the, uh, the, for the success of our region, we're going to have to have um, uh, really small business and entrepreneurs step up and create jobs. Duval works for Virginia Natural Gas, one of the largest energy corporations in the Mid-Atlantic region. Really, we expect them in most of the states to kind of handle the entire job. Right? Information sessions with key energy providers offered insight on procurement opportunities, to access to capital information, business certification information, strategic partnership opportunities, and understanding the channels of supplier diversity. When I ran for council, one of my platforms was the opportunity to, to increase small women and minority owned businesses and to work with uh, the Office of Economic Development. And this is our third annual uh, workshop because many businesses go through the problem of how to procure contracts from subcontractors. And this gave them that extra edge to make that happen. The SWAM Business Forum is one of several initiatives the Virginia Beach Department of Economic Development has launched to grow and support small businesses within the city. For additional information, log on to the website listed below. Studies prove that early education for preschoolers makes a significant difference in how successful a student becomes later in life. Last week, a group of child care specialists met for a special graduation ceremony. Susan Mathias, Jennifer Croden, Mary Beth Russell, Sheila Stratton and Melissa Wilson. Congratulations on reaching this milestone and may you have many, many more. Yeah. <laughs> Mayor Sessoms was on hand to offer personal congratulations to the graduates. I'm really proud of this program. It's award winning. It has served 107 small businesses throughout the region and touched the lives of more than 3,000 Virginia Beach children since 2010. We're also launching a family um, child, early childhood education business program. GrowSmart is the City of Virginia Beach's early learning initiative. We are located in the Department of Economic Development as part of the Comprehensive Workforce Development Strategy. GrowSmart has proven successful since partnering with Economic Development five years ago. It's really very simple for us. It's a, it's a matter of making sure Virginia Beach long term will always have a well-skilled, well-trained workforce to meet the demands of companies and industry in the future. 
The partnership between the small business development community and GrowSmart allows the team to connect the importance between educating our young people and how that transitions into a well-skilled, well-productive workforce. Because we know that when children are prepared to succeed in the early years, the first eight years of life, they um, are set on a path to success in the K-12 um, years and then they can be better prepared to enter the workforce upon graduation. The class offered the opportunity for classmates to discuss many of the issues they each face as early educators. It's an awesome feeling. Um, I went through this journey um, coming in not knowing a lot. Um, now that they had guided me um, through the right direction, um, knowing the right people who to talk to, it makes it very more, more at ease. We're thrilled that the city and the state have finally recognized the importance of early childhood education, but now we're also getting the training to run it as a small business. The program is free for participants. It provides them with one-on-one -on -one mentoring and coursework in strategic planning, leadership, business systems, and more. Tallwood High School recently hosted a delegation of students from Virginia Beach's sister city, North Down Ireland. <laughs> After arriving on September 25th, the first order of business for the delegation was painting a banner for Tallwood's football game against Crosstown rival Salem. After putting the final touches on the banner, it was time to get under the umbrella. But a rain-soaked evening didn't put a damper on these Irish visitors. Uh, we've done quite a lot of things. It's been quite like jam-packed, so on the first day, we arrived and we went to the football game of the school's football game and so it was very interesting. We don't have football back at home. We would more play rugby and soccer as you would call it. A Monday morning trip to the Virginia Aquarium had Irish eyes smiling as they spent the first part of the day gazing at the beautiful creatures swimming in the tank. Today is our first field trip. Uh, so we're here at the aquarium, and it's just been really interesting for them. They've gone, they've been very interested in all the exhibits, and it's just been a fun day so far. I recommend that you put your hand on the surface of the water. Visiting with the stingrays was something new for the Irish students, and an experience they will never forget. The aquarium, it was very interesting. It was a lot, uh, a lot better than what we would have at back home. We. They like sharks, they had turtles. Uh, it was just, it was cool, the amount of different colors of fish and everything that they had. And the species were just incredible. It was a very good time. A field trip to Back Bay National Wildlife Refuge provided students the opportunity to see native creatures uncommon to the Emerald Isles. Back Bay Refuge, I think it was really different from them since they don't have snakes or spiders there, so it was a different experience. Well, today we went to Bayback uh, Wildlife Center and we saw all the wildlife. Like, uh, I think we saw a couple tree frogs and caught my snake, which is venomous. We don't have any of those back home, which that was exciting. And the fun didn't stop at the National Park. Why the students come to Tallwood is because we're um, a global school just like you guys. We're the Transitioning from wildlife to the classroom was quite the juxtaposition for the delegation. And that's exciting because Lansdowne is a global passports school and they'll be talking to the fifth graders and the fifth graders focus is Europe so uh, this will be a good opportunity for them to meet some students and talk to them. We were all given a class and we went in and they asked this question about Ireland and our school and that was good. They were very talkative, asked a lot of good questions. Laura's roomie Maya stayed with her in Ireland last year and was excited to be a host this year. Ireland is really green. It has a lot of hills compared to here. It's just flat and then it's really humid here whereas in Ireland it's rainy all the time and it's windy and then um, like here, she likes she likes the weather, but she wishes that she could see the sun more because it has been hidden for a while. Right. Trips to Williamsburg and Jamestown provide a guest the opportunity to learn about our local history and a little shopping talked off the fun for the delegation. Kids love finding out how things work through fun, hands-on projects, and teachers love knowing they're preparing students for their techie future. Teachers in this next story devoted an entire day to science activities designed to inspire students. So what we are going to determine is what changes a pendulum. Sounds like a pretty tricky experiment, but students from John B. Dye Elementary have it all under control. They're combining learning and Did fun during STEAM Day. Anything? STEAM is really just getting the kids to think outside the box and exciting them, you know, where they can kind of use their skills that they have that they may not be able to apply in everyday classrooms. Um, 
We incorporate science, technology, engineering, art and math, and it really just allows them to have fun and not worry about a wrong answer. The entire school participated with each grade level doing a different activity. We need to cut the straw. These kindergarten students are building a house while uh -huh. Mr. Tempest's first grade class is learning how to filter water. Okay, so I'm gonna pour it through your thing, through your filter. So today what the class is doing is hopefully creating some kind of filter that will filter dirty water and then the upshot of that will be they're getting dirty, they're learning how things might work and might not work. And then afterwards, we'll start talking about oysters and how oysters filter water. STEAM is a school-wide initiative that lets kids explore tests and learn by doing. Plant, what do you mean by plant cycle? What part? The school is holding multiple STEAM days throughout the year to foster a love of math and science. It really gets the kids interested and it's getting them to think about things like engineering. That seems like a big word for a little person, but when we talk about it, they get it and it kind of sparks an interest that they may not have thought about before and it's working. I think it was really fun since I got to work with my friends and we were able to use different things that we wouldn't really think to use. While obviously fun, these activities are also providing students with a strong foundation for their future STEM education and careers. And with that, we've come to the end of our show, but if you've missed something or would like to see it again, you can view this program online, log on to vbgov.com media, then under the All Categories button, find and click on Access Virginia Beach. For everyone here at VBTV, I'm Stephanie Sutton. Thanks for watching.